Hello and welcome back to the High Running Institute YouTube channel. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial of the leg sugaring appointment. And if you're interested in seeing how this leg sugaring happens or what an appointment might entail, then just keep watching. All right, so first I'm going to go ahead and go in with the saran wrap. And I use this around my powder canister because it protects my canister from accumulating the excess sugar from the appointment and the bacteria that goes along with that. So it makes my cleanup really easy. And then I'm going to apply my nitrile gloves before I touch the client. And it's really important to get gloves that fit with sugaring because if they're too large, then they are going to slip off your hands. So I use the extra small gloves. All right, and then now I'm going to use my micellar cleansing water to cleanse the area. This is very important because if the client has any kind of body lotions or natural dirt or oils on the surface layer of the skin, it's actually going to prohibit you from picking up the hair during the sugaring service and it's going to make your job very difficult. So that's really important. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply my pixie protection powder. So this is really important because this powder is going to absorb any excess moisture in the area which is going to prohibit the sugar from doing its job and it's also going to protect the skin and this is a talc free powder so this is a healthy powder. You do not want to be using baby powder on your clients because talc is associated with certain health risks. So this is a really important step especially when we're doing services in such intimate areas we want to make the products that we're applying to the skin as healthy and not toxic as possible all right and once i've applied my powder this is the time when you can go in and start looking at the hairs so i'm observing what direction the hairs are growing in and that's going to indicate to me what direction i need to mold and pull in because when we sugar we are going to be molding in the opposite direction of the hair growth and then we're going to be pulling with the direction of hair growth so for the legs, I like to use my soft paste, and depending on the temperature of the room, I do mix it with some medium or pro, and this is just going to give me that extra grip once the sugar starts to heat up. But I like the soft paste because it's really easily spreadable over a large body areas, and it makes my job a lot faster. And again, you guys, this sugar paste is lemon juice, sugar, and water. So this is perfect for people who do have skin allergies, sensitive skin, or skin conditions such as rosacea, psoriasis. And also, this is going to be great for people who are just really eco-conscious and people who are not wanting to use toxic products on their body. So I am mixing those together to get my perfect paste. And I do like to take a pretty large ball when I'm doing the legs because this is going to help me speed sugar. So the larger the ball, the faster my service is going to be. All right, so now we are starting with the molding portion. So I am molding to start against the growth of the hair. And I'm eventually going to go in and start cross hashing, which you'll see in a second. But it's really important with the legs to mold really well because the leg hairs are pretty anchored in there, especially if they haven't sugared before. They're going to be pretty solidly anchored in there. And you're going to need to work the sugar paste into the skin pretty thoroughly for that sugar to grab onto the hairs for you to easily be able to pull it out. So you really want to be thorough when you're molding the legs because most clients' hair on the legs is actually going to be growing in four different directions. That's right. So the legs are very particular in that way and you do have to mold them very thoroughly, especially if it's the client's first time ever epilating or sugaring because that hair is going to be pretty anchored in there. And if you're not molding in all four directions to start, then you're actually going to have to go over the area again most likely and that's going to increase your appointment time. So here you can see I started going upwards, now I'm going to the side and it's going to start looking really pretty and this is called cross hatching. So I'm going over this area to make sure that I'm covering all of my directions so when I go ahead and flick that all of the hair, no matter what direction it was growing in, was stuck in the sugar and it will come out. So now I'm going down and I'm really just working that paste in. You can see the more that I work the paste into the skin, it's going to become a little bit softer and that's because I'm using the soft paste. So I like to start out with the cold soft paste because as the appointment goes on, this paste will start to generate some heat from the body and it's going to collect that heat and kind of warm up on the skin and it's going to make it easier to mold. But if I start with it too hot, then it can just melt on the client's skin and it becomes a goopy mess. So also if you notice my technique here, I am speed sugaring, so I'm doing a large area at one time. However, I like to leave about maybe two to three inches from the bottom base and from the knee. And that's because those areas, they tend to get a little bit more sticky and they tend to get sweat a little bit more. 
So I like to leave those until the end and have less contact time with the sugar because I don't want it to stick to the client and create a mess. So that's why I do that. Alright, so when I started flicking here, I realized that her hair was pretty anchored in there. So I actually wanted to go back and mold again while I still had the chance of having that sugar spread across her leg just to save me time. So I went ahead and did an extra mold, which is perfectly fine to do just to assure that all of that hair is going to be stuck within that sugar. And now we are flicking, people. So this is the flick. And this is going to make sure that hair is really pulled out. So if you notice with my left hand, I'm holding down the skin taut. This is extremely important because you can hurt the client and bruise the client if you're not holding their skin tight. And this client, she is really used to waxing, so it's not causing her any pain. But you still want to press the area after you are flicking because it can hurt the client. And you want to apply that pressure, especially in the angle because the ankle gets pretty spicy for the client and it can hurt pretty bad. So that's why I'm pressing here at the end and making sure that I apply pressure to alleviate any of that pain from the flicking process. And you can see that leg is super smooth. No hair on that leg. Yes, that's what we like to see. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and mold again and I'm going to show you some molding techniques right now. We're seeing another angle of what I'm doing here. So I'm applying the sugar and I want to specify here in particular about the hand placement. So if you take a look at my hand, what I'm doing with my fingers here is called claw hands. And this is extremely important because this is going to keep your glove on and it's going to make sure that the sugar is being worked into the skin properly. So that's a claw hand. So you see I'm on my fingertips. That is what you're supposed to do to make sure your glove doesn't come off. Now what you're not supposed to do is to flatten out your hand. And if you're going to notice flat fingers, this is a huge problem for sugar sugaristas because if you're flat fingers, your glove is going to slip off by the end of your appointment. And it's actually going to tire out your hand a lot more. So always, always do the claw hand, you guys. All right, so I'm just continuing to mold as usual. And I do also want to talk about the ways that we flick off the sugar. So one of the most important things to make sure that you're staying on top of before you flick is that you are coming past your edge. So right here, I'm going to continue cross hatching. And when it's time for me to pull past my edge, then I just stick my hand onto the furthest edge of where the sugar is. And that's where I'm going to flick from because if you're trying to flick from the middle or even a few centimeters from the edge of where the paste is, you're actually just going to pull the client's skin and it's going to hurt them pretty bad. And that's typically how clients will bruise. So you want to make sure that that skin is pulled really nice and tight. You come past your edge and then when you flick, it's going to be a parallel flick. Okay, this is really important. So one of the biggest problems with the flicking is that one, you're not coming past your edge, super important. See here how I'm coming past my longest point? That's a must, okay? And then for the other topic that I was talking about in terms of the parallel flicking, you don't wanna pull up because if you pull up, you're literally gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull the client's skin and bruise them. So you have to pull parallel to the skin. So if you see here, for the last parts of the ankle, you can kind of angle it towards the table, but when you're pulling, you do not want to pull upwards because it's literally going to be a sticky mess, okay? You just need to pull across and forward, almost like you're going to throw a tennis ball across the court, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, but that's really important for the flicking technique. All right, so now I'm just going and doing those ankles. I do like to do the ankles separately. This is just my personal preference. Some people do them all at once, but I find that the ankles tend to get a little bit more perspiration than the other areas. So I like to do them last so that I have less contact time with the sugar and it does not allow the sugar to melt onto the skin. And then I'm just going in again with my sugar and you're seeing a little bit more of the cross -hatch hatching action here. And I'm gonna go ahead and flick. And if you notice that my sugar has changed color pretty significantly since the beginning of the appointment, and that's because the sugar has been aerated, there are some air bubbles in there, there's hair in there, there's powder and dead skin particles in there, so the color does really change to a lighter tone throughout the service, which is nothing to worry about. 
So come past your edge, you're gonna flick, and then make sure you press that skin. Give them that comfort press, because your clients are going to thank you. All right, so now I'm going to go in with some aftercare. This is my favorite part. This is everyone's favorite part. So super smooth legs, as you can see. We ended up doing the full leg, but I did fast forward that. And I'm applying the botanical water, and then I applied the skin smoothing serum. So these two products are going to be great to seal that moisture into the skin. And it's also going to calm the skin with the natural plant extracts and it's going to reduce any inflammation or redness which is associated with hair removal. Typically sugar does not cause an allergic reaction because the formula is so simple for the product. However, the nature of hair removal is that you can have a natural reaction to the hair being pulled out of the follicle. So typically that would look like a little bit of swelling, redness, or a histamine reaction which can last for up to two hours which that's all totally normal and usually it will subside after the two hours and it will progressively get better over time so maybe you'll see it the first time but the next times they won't have that reaction and here we have the smooth legs I love it they look photoshopped oh my god who doesn't love smooth legs and this result is gonna last her for four to six weeks I usually recommend my clients come back in every four weeks for easy maintenance and always make sure to educate your clients about aftercare as well. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.